The views and opinions expressed on In Touch are those of the guests and do not necessarily reflect the official party or position of Backyard Broadcasting. Any content provided by our guests are of their opinion and they are not intended to malign a religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, individual, or anyone or anything. Good morning and welcome to In Touch, a Sunday morning public affairs show dedicated to the health and welfare of the Susquehanna Valley residents. I'm your host, Joey Michaels. Join us at this time as we interview difference makers in the community who want to help make the Susquehanna Valley a better place. This morning, we're talking with Jamie Gilbert. He's a 22-year life member of the Loyal Sock Volunteer Fire Company. We're talking volunteering, fundraising, and chicken. Let's turn to our interview with Jamie on In Touch, a service of Backyard Broadcasting. My name is Jamie Gilbert. How long have you been with the fire service? Uh, I am a life member, which takes 22 years to achieve that. Oh, that's a beautiful... In our company. A lot of other companies are different. But uh, our company uh, follows a strict bylaws uh-huh. and constitution, just like the United States does with everything. And and uh, it's based at 22 years. So Wow. So you you started 22 years ago. How did you get started? What what brought you into the fire service? <laughs> um, the shiny red trucks. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, third generation. Um, I had family members that served uh, the city of Wansport as paid uh, career firefighters. And... You grew up in the house with the scanner going all the time and listening and just decide that one day when I was old enough on my own, I decided I was just going to join. Wow, oh, that's outstanding. That really is. I mean, you. so what are the first steps you took when you got in? Did you get in the ambulance side or did you go in the, the red truck side? Uh, when I first joined, I overloaded myself. And a lot of people don't understand the, the amount of training and hours it takes Um you know, my first year I took our essentials class, which is the basic firefighting class. It Back when I started, it was 88 hours. And then my EMT, I took the same time. So I had 125 hours of EMT and uh, 88 hours of essentials. So it was like every Monday, Wednesday was EMT and every Tuesday, Thursday was essentials and every other Saturday was a different thing. So, And you took that all at the same time? Yeah, it's a lot different when you're not married and have children. It's a lot easier to do that. And those, those both require, at least the EMS requires a lot of constant uh, updates and trainings. Yeah, a lot of Con Ed. Um, the Con Ed is, they made it a lot easier lately. Uh, a lot of it's online now, so we don't have to worry about, you know, gosh, I got to change my schedule and get to get to a, a different fire hall to get a class. It's, it's all online now, which is great. Oh, and I know you mentioned that you were... Um, a CPR instructor. I am. I am as well. And it's one of those things where as many folks as you can teach the uh, life-saving tricks of the CPR trade, it's, uh, it's one of those things that uh, is, is brilliant. How long have you been a CPR instructor? Um, I've been about five years and, and uh, my wife actually got into doing it as well. Um, and she also teaches classes as well. So we're both, we're both very active in giving back to the community as best as we can. Um, and education is like a really important thing for both of us. Okay. And when you, when you talking about giving back to the community, how much of, of that does it take to get the company itself going? So in other words, when we, when we drive by and we see the trucks, I mean, they're pulling out and they're going and doing stuff. And maybe we have a membership card, um, you know, so that several bucks, hands, handful of dollars uh, a year. Um, what makes the company go? What keeps the trucks rolling and, and the guys going in there and doing what they're doing? I mean, I could tell you for my personal experience that possibly could be something to do with that chicken that's down there, uh, which was absolutely amazing. Don't mind saying it. Um, but I mean, what, what can, what can you tell me about what happens behind the scenes that, you know, are not just the red trucks that are pulling out? There's a lot behind the scenes. Uh, there's, there's obviously committee meetings, different committees, um, Fundraising is the big thing. Like you just mentioned, the chicken, the chicken barbecues, the the gun raffles, the gun tickets, you know, the the purse bingos, all that kind of stuff. Um, we're very fortunate here in Lawsock that our township supervisors are very gracious, and, and the township really takes care of us um, better than most areas um, around here. So, but yeah, we still have to fundraise. It still takes time for fundraising, uh, grant money, you know. Thank goodness for the federal government and state government, our you know our local and state officials and federal officials. You know if they 
They spend that time in Harrisburg or D.C., and sometimes they come out with good things, and the good things are the stuff that helps, you know, helps the fire departments and EMS and, and police as well. Oh, wow. Well, what happens then when you uh, – how many of these – fundraising events do you have a year i mean is it is it something that you you schedule ahead of time yeah right now for the chicken barbecues um you're you're in luck actually we're having one the 15th coming up here next weekend and then uh we um we have six of those planned for the year well we were gonna do one in april may and june we're gonna take july off because of the great summer and then august september october we'll be back to do Three more chicken barbecues. Uh, we're looking at doing possibly a gun bingo. Uh, we used to have a gun raffle. Um, in fact, we borrowed somebody from here one time, a couple times, to be MCs for us. Actually, two guys. So um, it's a it's it's a lot. It, there's a lot to do, and it's a very big commitment. So once you get started, you don't uh, you, you don't just say go to one event or one um, one call. You once you get into it, you are um, kind of drawn. I mean, it's it seems like the guys that are down there are really fed. They're fueled by uh, the want to be out and helping people. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it, you know, you just got to think about it. Like, you know, we could be sitting at Thanksgiving dinner, you know, with the entire family, 13, 14, 15 people there. And, you know, you carry that little pager and it beeps. You know, you, you're leaving. You're leaving your family. Um, there was times where, we had a real big fire on Christmas morning and uh, I wasn't married at the time, <laughs> but you know, I went, but there was guys that had kids and they missed their kids opening up packages from Santa because the fire came in. That's a uh, dedication that not a lot of folks understand. Now, if somebody wanted to say they drove by and, or maybe they're not even from this area, uh, maybe they're from an, another neck of the woods where there's uh, a fire company there. I know that a lot of companies might be hurting. I mean, do you have enough volunteers or, or how does how does the vol- volunteerism work around here? There's never enough. Uh, it's a shortage just like anything right now. Um, it just seems like volunteerism is, is, is tossed out the door now. Um, but if you're interested, you know, you can go to our website at Lowell Sock, which is www.lowellsockfire.org. Um, there's applications on there. There's information you can read up on. Uh, you can always call the station, uh, 570-323-3603. Um, somebody will be there to answer you. Now, can you have varying levels of volunteerism? Like if, say, somebody has several jobs uh, or somebody has, uh, they're still going to school. Is is it possible to come in and, you know, say, these are the days I can volunteer, but I am definitely, I'm not available these days because they, they just, you know, nowadays you have to have two and three jobs to survive. So is, is it possible for somebody to come in and not be overwhelmed with everything, but come in and just take baby steps until they get their schedule straightened oh, out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's different levels. There's many levels. Um, it, it, we always ask, you know, you do what you can. It, like it says, it says it on the doors. It's volunteer. You know, we, we don't get paid for any of it. And, you know, if you can give us five minutes, 10 minutes, an hour, thank you. Wow. Yeah, that's brilliant. That is, uh, you know, and, and uh, unfortunately, I'm finding that a lot of a lot of it just kind of goes out the, the wayside. I don't think a, a lot of people really understand or appreciate what you do as far as dedication, not only to the company, but, you know, your family. And so you are a lot of times put out. To, to go and do things uh, when somebody needs help. There's no question. There's a lot of guys that are just like, I'm going and this is what I need to do. I'm going to I'm going to save a life today. I'm going to make a difference. So it is possible for folks and wherever they're from to to contact their local company and say, I'd like to I'd like to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And, then you know, I just I just want to say this, too, is that, you know, it's nice that you invited me to help you to do this. Um, I don't want to speak for myself. I want to speak for everybody who does it. And, you know, Thank a person once in a while, you know, thank them for doing what they do. Um, you just never know what's going to happen. You just, you know, they, they could, they could see their family member and then two minutes later they may not be coming home and that's any service. That's the fire, anything, you know? Um, but yeah, it just, just, I don't know. <laughs> take, take, take a moment, take a, yeah. take a moment and say, you know, I, yeah. I, I appreciate what you do. And yeah. I think that would go a long way for a lot of guys that are, 
you know, they, the, even the folks that are paid on a 12 hour shift at the end of the oh, shift yeah. to say, um, you know, hey, thanks, man. I, I just, you know, I couldn't have done this without you or um, my God, you got my mom to the hospital and yeah. I just really appreciate that. It's just it's just a nice feeling when you get that kind of appreciation. And I don't think a lot of folks, maybe they don't think of it or maybe they, you know, they're wound up in everything that's happening at that moment. Mm-hmm. But sometimes to think, think, just take a second mm-hmm. to say, Hey guys, thanks. Oh, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. So, um, that, uh, so what do you have currently coming up? I did, I did think I did think I heard something about uh, chicken. We are. Is that doing another, I don't know if you want to call it world famous yet. We're going to try to see if we can compete somewhere, but. Oh my goodness. I, well, <laughs> I, I, you've got my, I mean, I am, I'm all about it. I'm telling everybody every day and yeah, I'm going to start stopping because I don't want to make, make that mistake of telling everybody and then. get. Oh, oh, please do tell everybody because, you know, once we sell out, that helps us out for the day, but. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. But I don't want you to get sold out before I get my chicken. That's my problem. So. But yeah, we have one coming up uh, May 15th. Now we start serving at 11. Um, obviously, we start early. We start at 5 a.m. and get the grill ready, and we cook. Uh, I think this time we're doing 500 halves wow. of chicken. And, you know, we always have the two sides in a roll, and the price is $10. And You know, we do get a lot of compliments on it. Um, a lot of people talk to you. I mean, everybody up here at the studios has always talked about the chicken. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we just, uh, I mean, we crack the mic and we say, don't forget to come get the chicken because ultimately we want to we want to help give back to those who've given to us. And so in saying that, I want to, I'd love to see you guys sell out. I'd love to see you guys make out because I know the money's going to an amazing cause. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I still want to make sure I get chicken at the end. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like I said, we're fortunate too. you know, a lot of townships and, and boroughs, you know, don't support the fire companies as well as ours do. And, you know, that's hats off to our township uh, uh, residents and our supervisors and whoever work, you know, in the township, it, they, they, they help us out tremendously. Oh, very nice. So volunteering as a whole, um, hopefully will get better. Um, and I can't thank you enough for coming to talk to me. I mean, you took time out of your day and in addition to everything else you do. Um, but it's it's one of those things that I'm, I'm hoping that people take a moment, just even just a second to say, wow, um, these guys are doing an amazing job. Something maybe someone would not want to get close to with a 10 foot pole. Um, but they they see the intensity. They see the need. Um, and you guys rush in when other people are rushing out. So I just want to say thank you oh. from us um, here at Backyard Broadcasting, and uh, hopefully uh, somebody else will will get the cue and and do the same thing, and then follow along, and maybe maybe you'll get a few more volunteers, which would be really nice. We and hope. at the same time, sell some chicken. <laughs> chicken, chickens, chickens the word right now. I guess that's the that's the plan for everybody. I'd like to thank Jamie Gilbert for joining us this morning and for becoming a 22-year life member of the Loyal Sock Volunteer Fire Company. We talked about volunteering, fundraising, and their amazing chicken. You don't want to miss it. If you're interested in volunteering, Station 18 is always welcoming volunteers at station18.org. Volunteers are always welcome. And thank you for listening to In Touch a production of Backyard Broadcasting. The views and opinions expressed on In Touch are those of the guests and do not necessarily reflect the official party or position of Backyard Broadcasting. Any content provided by our guests are of their opinion and they are not intended to malign a religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, individual, or anyone or anything. Anything.